Good afternoon. Hi, my uh, name is Bass Drummer, and I'm here to, today to talk a little bit about what I'm doing, how I'm using technology to facilitate a, a dream I had um, when I was 14, and let me just stop this click track, and how my own limitations and the limitations of my instrument are uh, making me innovate and are pushing me on creatively. Um, before I do that, I'd just like to thank Herb for inviting me today. Thank you very much. Thanks for seeing my videos online and thinking I might have something interesting to offer to your conference. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, Emma and Emma for looking after all the speakers so well. It's been, we've been fantastically looked after, so thank you. And also, obviously, Christian for recommending me that I'm part of the Thinking Digital family. So, in terms of the story, I thought I might as well start right at the beginning. So, as a, in 1994, <laughs> I was stood on our school, our school playing field, um, playing football, minding my own business, when a friend enthusiastically came over to me, shoved some headphones on my ears, and said, listen to this, you'll love it. So I did, I did listen to it, it's quite difficult to ignore that sort of, that sort of thing. And the music he played me that day absolutely blew me away. Um, I'd been playing drums at this point for about five years, and listening to lots of metal and Metallica and things like that. And I was really like, yeah, chasing the beats. But the music he played me that day was the first time I'd heard synthesizers and samples and all these things put together. And it was, it was the prodigy. It was Jilted Generation by the prodigy. So I immediately got that tape, rushed home, and started learning all the drum beats. And trying to make my drums sound like dance music. This is 1994. Okay, so I'm, I'm there tuning drums, and I've got tom-toms, and I'm like, trying to make all the sounds. And it just wasn't happening. I, just, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, it. It didn't sound like the music on that tape. Because the technology just wasn't there. It wasn't available to me. I didn't have the knowledge. Um, and it wasn't going to be for another um, 13 years that I would have that knowledge. It was a really frustrating time. <laughs> So, technology and put my drumsticks down. Technology and music have got this really interesting relationship. So, there's this technological advance here, and then musicians get hold of this advance and they kind of go, "Oh, brilliant! What can we do with this? Let's be creative." And suddenly, at this point where you reach the limitation of that technology, interesting things start happening. So, that limitation makes you be creative. Let me give you an example of that. So, back in the late 1700s, an amazing new bit of tech was invented, the piano, okay? Everyone's great product. Suddenly, instead of being, <laughs> thanks. Suddenly, instead of being able to play the harpsichord, it's all one dynamic. 
you're playing it, but then you had to put a pedal down and change dynamics. Suddenly, you got the hammer action um, keyboard, which means that the harder you press a, a note, the louder it gets. And so Mozart gets hold of this new technology and starts making music like this. So suddenly, this technology, I won't talk about Mozart, sorry. <laughs> suddenly, this technology allows this huge amount more expression. So you can play loudly, you can play quietly, you can, you can really express yourself. OK, so the technology's here. And Mozart's like, sweet, <laughs> I'm going to take this new tech and I'm going to run with it. 150 years later, you've got people like John Cage using the same technology, the same instrument. But it's been used for 150 years. How am I going to do something interesting with this? How am I going to innovate with this? So what he did was did pieces for a prepared piano. So he used the same hammer action, opened up the keyboard, put in nuts and bolts and marmalade and, and all this sort of stuff. And he was like using the same technology. But he was at this point where he was like, well, how am I going to push it? How am I going to push myself? And then he started making the same instrument, music like this. I will talk over John Cage. So whatever you think of this aesthetically, him pushing, sorry, him pushing what you can do with an instrument leads to an interesting result. OK, so when you've got this technology and you're limited, you've got to be innovative to do, to do new things. What pushed me on and what finally I discovered um, in 2007 and the innovation that happened after John Cage was the manipulation of audio, okay, and specifically sampling. So suddenly, oh, excuse me, um, I got this pad, and suddenly it was like a moment when I'm like, oh, brilliant, I can play. I can play whatever sound I like as part of my drums. Ah, oh, sweet. So I had this one pad for about seven years, and I played in bands, and I triggered samples. And I kind of got to the limit of what I could do with that. And about 18 months ago, I had a child, and my time was much more limited. And I thought, well, I don't, I'm going to try and do everything myself. I want to play dance music on my drums all by myself. So I got another pad. And then I can put things together a little bit like this. So let me show you what's going on. So on this pad, I've got the lead. I can play that. And on this pad, I've got some bass. And on this pad over here, yeah, you can see that, um, I, can, I can play things with my fingers. And it can all go together a little bit, something like this.
Thank you very much. Okay. So I can play dance music on my drums, yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I'm limited. I'm limited as a player. So I've only got nine pads over here, so I need to use nine notes in lots of different ways and try and make it interesting. And I've only got eight notes over here, to, and I need to be able to make it so it's a whole tune, doesn't get too massively boring. It also facilitates some creativity. So that sort of pattern when you're going... It's just kind of improvised. Like, I would never have written that unless it was within the technology. So the technology is facilitating, but the limitations are making me innovate. Um, so back to the Prodigy. <laughs> um, the Prodigy use um, samples in their, in their work. And as a drummer, obviously, um, I can learn those samples. So one of the most famous samples, which you'd all have heard before, is the Amen break, which sounds a bit like this. OK, so I can spend hours and hours and hours learning that drum break and being like, right, cool. But I want to play dance music on my drums. <laughs> and I don't want to just play a drum break. So I'm going to use the technology to facilitate that vision. So I'm like, right, OK, cool. How am I going to play that? But I'm limited, so because I can't play bass and do that, because it's quite complicated. So I'm going to use this technology. I've got the bass drum here, the um, snare drum there, and the hi-hat there. So I can play the whole drum beat with one hand. Let's just pitch that back down. So suddenly I can play other things at the same time. Okay. Um, when I was talking to Christian about this talk, he was saying, you know, what's your, what's your take home? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, so if I was going to leave you with any sort of idea, it's about this. That, okay, technology has got me to this point. Technology has facilitated my vision, um, however long ago. That was 20, 22 years ago when I was a kid. Um, it's allowed me to do that. But what's really interesting and what keeps me coming back and what, what makes me excited about every time I sit down towards my drums and whatever technology you use, it's my own limitations as a player, it's, my, it's the limit. I could buy another load of other pads and have lots of samples, but at some point, you've got to limit yourself. And where that technology is facilitated, your limitations then can make you be, give you that spark of creativity. So um, however you take, want to use that, that's entirely up to you. This represents, this, this is my last song. Good, I've got enough time. Um, and this kind of represents where I've got to on this journey. I admit that it's only a journey, and I've still got quite a long way to go. Um, thanks so much for listening. Ooh.